It's that time of year when all eyes are on Apple during its worldwide developer conference, WDDC, or DubDub for short. This is where the company shows off its latest software updates that will come later in the year. This year for HomeKit, we get several updates to HomeKit Secure Video, Siri added to third-party devices, and improvements to tvOS and HomePod. So continue watching this video to find out more about these new features. I'll give you a demo as we move through the video of actually using them, and also some features that I've spotted that Apple didn't mention. Now, before we get started, if you're new to this channel and you've not been around before, then there is plenty of other HomeKit videos that might be of interest to you from news, reviews, and tutorials, and you might want to check them out. If you do like what you see, I'd be greatly appreciated if you could subscribe to the channel because we push out new content nearly every single week and you'll be notified when you subscribe and hit the bell button. Also, don't forget to check out our social channels, particularly Twitter, where we're constantly putting out HomeKit information, and also Instagram, where we post behind the scenes information around HomeKit, our content creation, and various other things. Thanks very much. Let's get straight into the video. With the introduction of iCloud Plus, which will bring private relay and private email, HomeKit Secure Video also gets a bump in the number of cameras supported. At present, the minimum iCloud account is the 200 gig plan, which supports one camera, and the two terabyte plan, allowing up to five cameras with HomeKit Secure Video. However, with iCloud Plus, the 50 gig plan now allows access for one HomeKit Secure Video camera. Then the 200 gig plan gets five HomeKit Secure Video cameras, but the two terabyte plan offers unlimited HomeKit Secure Video cameras. The two terabit plan update will be a welcome news for lots of users that have got a lot of cameras within their home. And the best thing about this is all the same price as before, which is great news. Additionally, HomeKit cameras and video doorbells that support HomeKit Secure Video will also get an upgrade. When Apple introduced HomeKit Secure Video, this feature included the ability to detect people pets and vehicles. Now Apple is inducing parcel detection, which will alert users in the home when a parcel has been detected. And this will be a great feature for those people that have a lot of deliveries and they're not at home. And I've tested it out and it works pretty well in the first beta. HomeKit Smart Locks is also getting some love this year with the possibility to add a key within your wallet on iPhone and Apple Watch. This update follows on from the same update for the digital car keys that will make use of the U1 ultra wideband chip. This feature will enable a user to approach a door and when used with a HomeKit enabled smart lock that has got this feature enabled, you simply swipe or tap to open the door. This is something I talked about in a video about Apple could use ultra wide band and how technology can improve HomeKit automations. A variety of manufacturers have signed up to this initiative, including one of my favorites, Acara. Now moving on to tvOS. Updates to tvOS means you can ask Siri on your HomePod Mini to play something on your Apple TV. This will be great for movie nights, with the family, or when you want to access content quickly. Apple TV will also get share play and share with you, so you can easily watch the things that your friends and family have shared with you. Or if you want, you can watch it all together using SharePlay. The Apple TV own screen will also have a new row called for all of you. This row features content that is recommended and appropriate for the entire family. And you can also customize it for who is waiting to watch with you with the Apple TV, and you can choose who is there and it will recommend based on those preferences. Unkit also gets improvements via Apple TV as well. You get the option to see multiple camera feeds in one screen. Additionally, users get the ability to control accessories from what room directly that camera is assigned. I've been playing with this feature and it works well, particularly with things like smart locks where you can close or open the lock. Apple has also added notifications that pop up on the Apple TV when accessories are controlled. And they didn't mention this in the keynote. This currently works with locks that I found so far in the beta, but I'm hoping Apple expands this to motion detection, particularly with HomeKit cameras. So if you're watching content, your Apple TV, it may be pop up and say motion has been detected outside, a person has been detected outside. And again, this is something I've talked about in a previous video. So open Apple in the future betas, open this up. Now moving on to HomePod mini updates. With the original HomePod getting discontinued earlier this year, the HomePod mini gets in on the stereo pairing action with the Apple TV 4K. When you're watching content, your Apple TV, you will now be able to use two HomePod Minis as a stereo pair with the TV. The HomePod Mini will also get support for Lugus Audio, 
in more countries like Australia, Ireland and New Zealand later this month and Italy will also get support but not until the end of the year. Siri is also moving on to third party devices. Later this year, Apple will open up Siri functionality to select third party manufacturers to build Siri into the device. This will enable devices like the Ecobee 4 thermostat to listen and respond using Siri. This step will open up the possibility to have Siri in more rooms than ever. Although this feature still requires a HomePod mini or original HomePod in the home as Siri within these devices merely a relay. Apple said that this was to ensure privacy was maintained. Now Apple Watch and HomeKit also get some improvements. The Home app on your watch is getting a redesign with additional features, including the ability to control relevant accessories depending on that moment, which does suggest to me that Apple may use you one in the Apple Watch and OnePod Mini to detect your location. It also could use the time of day context to be able to give you a better experience when using the OMAP to give you those devices that you use at certain times of day. But this is just a guess at this stage and they will reveal more as we move through with the beaters. You can also use it to talk to the person at your door directly on your wrist if you are using a HomeKit video doorbell. Plus users can use the HomePod feature intercom that lets you broadcast a message throughout your home. Now moving on to Matter and what it means for HomeKit. As expected, Matter did get a update although it was quite brief. The Matter Connectivity Standard, this is a unifying protocol known as Matter, formerly the CHIP project, which will allow both HomeKit and Matter certified devices to be controlled in the OMAP. As Apple didn't go into much detail on the key difference between a Matter device and it works with HomeKit device, then it's a case of wait and see how this will impact HomeKit and how it turns out and what benefit a Matter device will bring to HomeKit users over a normal traditional works with HomeKit device. Uh, now, whilst there's no changes in the OMAP yet, like things like icons, a redesign of the OMAP has not been brought in, but maybe icons and things like that will come later down in the betas. There is a small change that I noticed buried in the settings, which is for users. There is a residence and a owner label against usernames within the OMAP. Now, at the moment in time, you cannot assign a label to a user. UMKIT automatically does that. But this suggests that possibly Apple are looking at allowing some sort of user level control or even guest access to your HomeKit and OMAP. And this is going to be something that we will start to see as we move down the betas. But right now, there's nothing really enabled. But I just wanted to point that out. So what is UMKIT and the future? Although Apple didn't go all out with what I was expecting in HomeKit this year, particularly around U1 and ultra wide band, this year has seen some improvements to HomeKit Secure Video, Apple TV, HomePod that users are sure to love. But the most interesting is what Apple didn't say. The fact they're utilizing U1 in smart locks and maybe the Apple Watch to determine the location of your home this suggests me they are laying the groundwork for what HomeKit will become in the future. Artificial intelligence, machine learning, and also using presence detection via U1. This is certainly an exciting time for HomeKit. So guys, that's the end of this video. Hopefully you found it useful. And if you have, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. And also if you're new to this channel, then hit the subscribe button and also the bell button and check out the other videos on the channel. Also check out our social channels on Twitter and Instagram. Thank you very much. I'll speak to you soon.